Okay, how you doing? Um, I want to talk about very simple uh, this idea of y equals the sine of x versus y equals the sine of two x. And it's, uh, it's basically your first time that you're really going to talk about uh, the idea of altering uh, the domain it, for one period. And when what I mean by that is, you know, they call it uh, your period length. You're altering your period or somehow really some way. Well, essentially what you're doing here is what I want you to understand is that you're really just altering the domain of your inputs so that it takes your uh, a, either a greater amount of time to cover the sine wave or it takes a less amount of time or you're a smaller domain to cover your, your sine wave. So what I have up here is a couple things. The first thing you really want to understand about these functions, we always want to take uh, the sine or cosine of 0, pi over 2, uh, pi, 3 pi over 2, or 2 pi. And the whole reason for it is simply because these values, that if we take the sine or cosine of them, will always give us an integer. It's not so much they'll give us a rational expression, because if you take the sine of 30 degrees, your output is 1 half, which is the sine of pi over 6, is 1 half. Now, that's nice, but an integer is nicer to plot than a, um, a rational expression. And also, the other important thing that we find about these values is that if I take the sine or cosine of 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, or 2 pi, that those values are actual critical values. And what I mean by critical values is the fact that there's some major significance to them. So the significance that we have, if we come over here and we look at the sine down here, Okay, is that if I take a look at my domain of the original first period, so how long does it take to go around a circle? Well, any circle in the entire world, that if I uh, go around it, how many, you know, what's the angle relationship, is going to be 2 pi, so which is 360 degrees. So, what we have plotted down here is actually the relationship of what it takes to go around the circle, and we're plotting that against the output that it creates. So remember that when you plot a graph, your input is always your independent variable. And your independent variable in this case actually happens to be an angle. So this axis down here, which is the input, is also my angles. And that's why I'm putting angles here. And what we need to understand is that this x is representing an angle in this problem up here. So to continue on with this idea, what we need to take a look at up here is what do I get? And the next thing we need to always understand is that, okay, I have this y equals sine of x, but if we go back even farther to when we first started learning these actual um, uh, ratios, you were taught that the sine of theta, which is some angle, is associated or is the ratio of y divided by the radius of its circle. Well, hopefully somewhere along the way, your teacher or professor talked about the unit circle and the idea, well, the unit circle is just something that has a radius of 1. So up here, we then began to say, okay, well, if my radius is 1, then I can say that sine theta is whatever my y-coordinate is on the circle. So wherever I am at on this circle, when I take the sine of the angle that that point has been created from a ray traveling through around that circle or rotation, that that is just going to be the y-coordinate that is on that particular circle. So that's an important idea to understand. And then that translates all the way down into here that we start to put, okay, let's plot just the trig ratio because this is putting both ratios together. So a circle is the plot of sticking both the sine ratio and the cosine ratio together and adding them so that you create some function. All right, or some equation, where now we're just going to break them apart and say, okay, let's just observe just the sine function plotted over some length of an, of an angle. So what we now have here is that the original period went from 0 to 2 pi, and what we started to notice is that because it's a circle, okay, once I get to this point, as soon as I continue to go a longer angle or a greater angle measurement or a greater arc length, that this point would be the same as if I had some other angle relationship that's the same. So which we say then is that when I plot this, what I'm going to actually have is that this is going to become periodic. So that's basically the rundown of all of that. And we talked about that the domain to complete one period goes from 0 to 2 pi. So 
If I look at the original first period, the wavelength that we create here goes from 0 to 2 pi, and now just taking this and looking at it, what we have here is that pi over 2, I have a maximum, which means my values start to increase, 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 increase till they get to pi over 2, and then my values decrease, then they come back to an intercept, which makes it a critical value. And then I get all the way down to 3 pi over 2, so they're decreasing, decreasing, and then they stop at 3 pi over 2 and start to increase again. So, it's a critical value because it's a minimum. This is a critical value because it's a maximum. And then I'm back to an intercept, what makes them critical values. When I talked about the pi over 6, pi over 6 is 1 half. It's not really a critical value. Sure, it's nice, but it really has no significance or playing. It's not altering the, the, where my uh, curvatures or anything like that. It's not a maximum. It's not a minimum. It's not an intercept. It literally just it was a point that helped me plot this original function along to see what the actual uh, graph would look like. So, these are basically my main critical values. Now, they're the ones that I always want to take the sine function of. So, what occurs when I say take the sine of 2x? Now, it's important to understand what I'm asking you. What I'm asking you to plot now is what, let's plot when the output when I take the sine of a double of some angle. So now I'm saying to you, let's double some angle, any angles that I want, and plot its output and see what it looks like. So the way we start with taking a look at this now is the idea that I'm doubling angles. But remember when I came back to you that I said we always want to take the sine of 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2 or 2 pi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play just a game along the, the lines of Okay, well, if I always want to take the sine of those, then I'm just going to look at what angles do I have to double to create these. And the easiest way to think about it, well, if I have to double some angle to get to this, right, well, let's just divide this by 2, and then that's the angle that I clearly have to double, okay? So, if I divide 0 by 2, so taking a look at this, okay, because I always want to take the sine of 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, I'm just going to divide all these by 2 because then when I stick them back into here and multiply them by 2, it'll create all of these. But the important thing to remember is that whenever we graph something, we graph the input versus its output. So, let's talk about how we might organize this information. So let me get rid of this. So, what I like to use is something called the, the, any, the, uh, the compound inequality because it just makes it nice, simple, and neat, and organized to use. So what I always do here is I say, okay, the original uh, domain was if my x value, so just some angle went from 0 to 2 pi. Well, remember I said we still want to plug in those values of 0 to 2 pi. So my inputs, okay, my domain, I still want to go from 0 to 2 pi. But what I'm saying to you is that I'm going to double my inputs. So I'm going to use the same domain of 0 to 2 pi. But now I want all of the inputs to be doubled, so I double my inputs, and I figure out what are all my new inputs going to be so that I still get back to taking the sine of 0 and 2 pi. So I start dividing this and solving it, so 2 divided by 2 divided by 2, and what I have is 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to pi. Now these, the important part to understand, is that this is the end point, this is the beginning point. So what I now have is that I'm looking at this new function, okay, that I'm saying to you goes from 0 to pi. All right, the original function went all the way out to 2 pi, right? So, the other thing we need to know is that now I'm saying to you all of my inputs that I plug in are going to just end at pi, and when I do that, all of the inputs that I plug in will really be like as if I'm taking the sign of 0 and 2 pi and pi and pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So the inputs are going to trick the function into believing that I'm taking those. So my entire sine function, this pattern, will have occurred by the time I get to pi. So very easily, all I have to do now is I take a look at this. This is broken into four. Break this into four equal segments. Well, divide it in half. So pi divided in half is pi over two. Pi over two divided in half is pi over four. Okay, and the halfway point between a half and a whole is 3 pi over 2. Okay? Over 4, I'm sorry. Over 4. 
And what I now have here is all of my new critical values. Now, the important thing we also need to look at is, okay, how, did I, how can I get these differently? Well, remember a circle is broken into four points, so four quadrants, sorry. So if I take this total period, which is pi minus zero to figure out its length, which is pi, okay? And then I take a look at this as being some length of pi. Well, this length has to be broken into four. Well, how do you break into four equal segments? You take whatever that length is and divide it by four. And what this now tells you is the length of your intervals. So how long it takes to get to your next critical value. Well, if I start at zero, add pi over four, pi over four. Well, pi over four, add pi over four, which of quarter and a quarter make a half. Add another half, I get three quarters. Add another, add another quarter, I get a half, I'm sorry, a, a whole. Sorry, I said add a half here, so you get three quarters. But anyway, what I now have is that these are the inputs that will make this take the sign of zero, uh, pi over two, pi, uh, three pi over two, and two pi. So that's the nice thing. Now those inputs create those same outputs that we had, which were one, negative one. So zero, remember, still created zero, because two times zero is zero, which means I'm still taking the sign of zero. Cool. Pi over four. The input was pi over four, but I doubled that input, then took the sine function of it, so doubling pi over 4 is like taking the sine of pi over 2, which gave me my output of 1. Pi over 2 is 0. Okay, so just following the pattern now. So 3 pi over 4 and pi. So what I essentially have here now is the fact that I've got the same sine curve over a shorter domain. And that's really what we're doing when we say we're altering the period, is we're really changing the domain that it takes, so your input length that it takes, for you to complete one sine curve. So I hope that really helps you to understand what you're kind of doing and not just saying, oh, this alters your period, plug this in and do it. So I hope that really just gives you a little bit more to push you over the edge to really truly understand what these trigonometric functions are doing. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to send me a, a comment and I'll do my best to answer it. So I hope that helps.